Am I the a-hole for not treating my niece slash bio daughter more like one of my kids? I have a niece, Ava, 14 female, who is also my bio daughter, as I'm her sperm donor. She is the daughter of my sister and her wife. Her wife's the bio mother as well. They obviously could not have children together. They decided to tell Ava about it a few months ago. Originally, the plan was to have Ava know from the beginning, but they changed their mind. That's a whole other story though. Anyway, since Ava has found out, she started coming over to our house every day. It used to be just after school every day, but now that summer break has started, she is here from early in the morning too. Now, my niece is great and all, but having a guest over every day was a little much for me. I talked to my wife about it, and she admitted she also wasn't happy about having a guest every day either, but hadn't said anything because she didn't think it was her place to interfere given the situation. I told her I understand, and we agreed to talk to our kids about them inviting her over less. However, when we talked to them, we found out that they were not inviting her over. We had assumed they were, since the three were always together. They've explained it to us that she just started following them home after school one day. They've also said that they don't like having her over so much either. They don't mind her over sometimes, but they don't want guests over all the time either. They also said with her always around, they feel like they can't go out and do things with their friends or invite them over. So after we talked it through, we agreed we would all be more comfortable with her coming over more like once every other week. Which I will add, is still a lot more than she previously used to come over. Previously, we would only see her in holidays. I talked to my sister about it and she says I'm wrong for wanting to push Ava out and calling her a guest. She says that she's figuring out things and wants to spend more time with her bio siblings. Furthermore, she said her daughter was crushed that we are going on a big family vacation next month and hadn't invited her yet. Another thing that has bothered her according to my sister is that we gave her the same birthday gifts as we usually do, a $50 gift card, like nothing has changed. Overall, my sister thinks I should be treating her more like how I treat my kids now. Obviously, this is a delicate situation and we want to treat it as such but we do think it's fair to have some firm boundaries. Edit, just so everyone knows, the donation was done through a clinic, and there is paperwork saying it was a donation, and I am not the legal parent of any child that was created through the donation. Now for the top comments. She expects things to change, not realizing that you and your wife already knew and treated her no different. She sounds young and might need therapy soon. Not the a-hole. This is a tricky situation, but it's better to have an open conversation now and set boundaries before she develops more expectations. I'd sit with her, maybe in therapy, and explain that you are not her dad. You are merely someone who provided DNA. I'm sure you have documents to support this as well. That you love her as a niece, that she is family, but she is a niece and a cousin, not a daughter to you, nor your nuclear family. Your sister is the a-hole, because she's essentially trying to pawn her kid off on you. Again, I'd pull documents here. It needs to be explained that regardless of her knowing this information, nothing is going to change. To be honest, I have a feeling sister and sister-in-law have been telling her things. So y'all need to sit down and get on the same page as well. 100% this right here. And I'm guessing this was the plan all along. Obi even said his sister thinks he should be treating her more like how he treats his kids now. Therapy is a great idea, but I don't know if it will work if sister and sister-in-law don't want to see the problem and agree with how their daughter is behaving. For sure, there has to be discussion with Ava on clear boundaries, and unfortunately, it looks like there is no way Opie is going to be cast as anything other than a villain, thanks to the way Ava's parents have handled this, through absolutely no fault of his own. None of my business, but I'm really curious why they didn't tell Ava at the very beginning and only decided to when she's what, three to four years away from graduating? Perhaps they want Opie to help pay for her college? Yep, that painful discussion has to happen ASAP. There was a post on another sub where the Opie was mulling the same situation and being a supermarket donor to his sister's wife. I felt it would be a weird dynamic being called Uncle Dad, and it makes me think this is akin to a child being adopted and trying to connect with a Bayou Dad slash Mom. There is more going on here than I think Opie knows about. I have a hard time seeing this ending well for Opie and Ava. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my brother and his family move in with me? 
My 27 female brother, 31 male, asked if he could move in with me and my husband. To sum it up, my brother is basically a man-child. How he got a woman to marry him and bear his child is lost on me. My parents pampered him like crazy. Whatever he wanted, they would get it for him. But when it came to me and my older sister, 30 female, we were told to be happy with what we have. He never had to clean or do anything around the house and got to come and go as he'd like. But we weren't allowed to because we were girls. The only thing he had going for him was school and he even managed to screw that up. He was offered a full scholarship and had a job lined up for him as soon as he finished college. But he decided to drop out because he didn't want to put in the work and would rather mooch off our parents. Him, his wife, 40 female and their child, 8 male, have been living with our parents for the past 9 years. Except for when our sister was trying to help him find a job close to where she lives and she had him live with her. They were leasing an apartment, but due to him not being able to hold down a job and his wife not making that much money working at a salon, they had to move in with our parents. Last year, I flew my entire family out here for the holidays. It was the first time they were visiting my home in 8 years, since I'd moved out of my home country for college and decided to stay after I completed my nursing degree. Since then, I've gotten married to my husband 42 male and had my daughter 2 female. My brother kept commenting on how nice and spacious our house is, and I thought nothing of it. It wasn't until when it was time for them to leave that my brother asked if him and his family could come live with us, seeing as we have more than enough space to accommodate his family. We live in an 8-bedroom slash 7-bathroom home, so he says it wouldn't be an inconvenience if they were to live here. But based on my brother's track record, he would absolutely find a way to inconvenience us. And according to him, he is going to try and find a job. But I don't believe him. When he couldn't get through me, he tried to get our parents to convince me and even tried to pressure my husband into agreeing. He almost agreed to it to keep the peace, but I stood firm. It's been six months since we've had that argument, but they still haven't let up. Edit. For those of you worried that we're wasting money on a big house and don't need those extra bedrooms, my husband has a big family, so we sometimes host them. And we do also foster kids, so we want to make sure we have enough room. And some of you misunderstood me. I didn't let my family move in with me. They were just visiting. Not the a He isn't your child. You aren't responsible for any adult other than yourself. This might be the first time in his life he's ever heard no. Your responsibility is to your child and your husband. Your mooch brother moving in would not be in the best interests of your child or marriage. Your brother would stress you out and add more to everyone's workload around the house, taking away from the attention you're giving to each other and your careers. Whatever stress you're dealing with now from his persistence is a fraction of what you'd get if he moved in. There's only so many hours in a day. Don't allocate any to raising a man-child. I have had certain family members who were not used to being denied anything. Others were expected to move mountains to get them what they wanted. They would nag, beg, and complain, to the point of physically following me around the house and would attempt to guilt trip or manipulate to get their own way. These were adults. It doesn't end with these types. Nothing convinces them that they won't eventually be successful if they just keep up the pressure. Not a hole. He will just become your responsibility to take care of. He won't appreciate it and it will damage your relationship much more when you ask him to move than saying no to him moving in. He will also not help clean, cook, watch his own child, contribute anything financially, and probably leave a mess slash destroy things. He would expect to join you at restaurants, for free, and the trips you take. I wouldn't even let them stay for a weekend. Yep, I absolutely see this as a nightmare. No contributions. He's definitely not getting a job. And if they're moving from as far away as it sounds, wife won't have a job either. They'll trash the place and expect you to fix it. And expect you treat his family the way you treat your own. Trips, meals out, movie nights, expensive gifts, etc. Host people without telling you or inviting you. So you have to leave or stay in a designated area for the duration. I definitely see him as the type that demands resident privileges when they are planning a party and insists they are guests when there is housework to be done. They'll probably have more kids since there's so much room and you will never get them out. It sounds like you and your husband are doing well financially, probably better than your parents, and he wants to take advantage of that improved lifestyle. I see 20 to 30 years in the future 
They are still living there, as are their now adult children and their spouses and kids, because you can afford to support them all. Don't do it. Your parents are pressuring you because they don't want to deal with him anymore. He is pressuring you because he sees your house as an upgrade he can live in, without having to contribute financially or physically. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not transferring the social pension I am receiving from the state to my mother? I, teen female, have been receiving social pension from the state since my father passed away in 2017. At first, it was my mother, 54 female, who received the money on her account. But as soon as I turned 18 in 2022, the money started going to my account. My mother immediately told me to sign a document that would allow her to keep receiving the money on her own account. And when I refused, she yelled at me and generally tried to guilt trip me into caving in. So I felt I had no choice. Fortunately, my country's law didn't allow it, so I kept receiving the money. Then she told me to transfer the money to her, so I did, but she only allowed me to keep a ridiculously small part of it. The social pension is around 614 US dollars, and she only let me keep about 25 dollars. Then her final offer was 50. I just want to be independent with my own money, save for college, my future, etc. Yet she claims that I will only waste it for treats. Yesterday, I had enough. At first, I asked her to let me leave about 75 US dollars for myself, and she said no, so I didn't send her anything. She called me cruel and greedy and told me that she's ashamed of my behavior and that I should be ashamed too. She then told me that this money helped her survive when we were poor, a few years ago. Saying that was most likely another attempt to guilt trip me, as nowadays, she and my stepfather are prosperous. They buy themselves new cars quite frequently, buy expensive dinners for themselves from time to time and could afford extensive renovations in our house, purely to make it more aesthetically pleasing. She also claimed that she has to pay bills and my expenses with that money. When I said that I could chip in and pay for whatever bills I generate, she of course refused. After shouting at me yesterday, she has been giving me the solid treatment and I don't know what to do anymore. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I'm not American, so US laws don't apply to me. Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. This is your money. Yours, not hers. You are 18. Old enough to have and be responsible for your money and decide what it is spent on. Keep your money. This. It's her money. If she needs the money, she can explain exactly why. It's fair to explain, not just demand. It seems very much like Opie has good plans for the money like paying for college and owes cost of rent in her country. She needs this money to start her own life. And it appalls me that this mom is being too damn selfish. Through a new marriage, she has financial security, but doesn't want Opie to have this money? And of course she's guilt tripping her with the fact she did the bare minimum a parent is legally required to do for her kid. Keep the money and ignore mommy dearest, not the a-hole. My wife's mother died shortly before her 17th birthday. Her dad stole all but one of her survivor's benefits checks. He was more physically violent than Opie's egg donor when my wife brought it up. Both are still abusive a-holes who have no right to the money. Oh, my dad stole my mom's life insurance money from me, which was fun to deal with come adulthood. Not the a-hole. The money is for taking care of you, which is why she was getting the money until you were legally an adult. The money's purpose is the same, but you're an adult now, so you can use it to take care of yourself. I recommend finding a path to independence. Make sure to dump a bit from every check into a savings account that only you have access to. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to wet myself for my sister-in-law's wedding? The wedding happened in a little river. And I mean in the river. In the water. The minister, bride, who's my husband's sister, and groom stood on a little strip of land so they were not wet. But all attendants were expected to stand knee-deep in rushing water for the whole ceremony. I'm sure it made for great photos, but I personally really dislike mud, germs, insects, and whatever disease are found in that stream. The kids who couldn't easily stand in water that might be as tall as their whole body were left in ankle-deep water nearby, with a couple older women. When I refused to remove my shoes, socks, and pull up my dress pants, my husband offered that I stay with the kids. I said no, I refuse to walk into that water, even if it's just ankle deep. Apparently, most people there knew about the water thing, but I didn't. My husband knew, but claims he forgot to tell me. 
The ceremony could have easily moved forward with me standing on the shore, just a few feet away from the kids. But no. The bride and groom apparently refused to start until every person was in the water, and my husband waited in the water back and forth between his sister and me to mediate. My husband was becoming visibly angry at me the longer it went on, and kept acting like I was in the wrong. The bride and groom eventually relented and the ceremony went on, delayed by maybe 30 minutes. Then in the after party, I felt that I was being avoided by everyone else, including my husband. That was nearly two weeks ago. My husband was stone-faced and refusing to talk to me about it, or about anything at all for several days. And when he started talking again, he refused to address the wedding beyond telling me that I humiliated him in front of his family, and he refuses to talk about it any longer. Things like, I will get really angry if you keep bringing up this topic, put it to rest, and I will try to forget what you did. But I feel like I did nothing wrong. I feel blindsided, because if I'd been told in advance what the wedding entailed, I would have faked a stomach bug and not attend a damn thing at all. Am I the a-hole? Major not the a-hole. That's information you need before the wedding. Like, well before the wedding. Firstly, whatever clothes you wear will probably be ruined. Secondly, you need to bring towels and a change of pants. Thirdly, it's perfectly reasonable not to want to stand in reverse slash creek water for any reason at all. Your spouse is a massive a-hole for not telling you in advance. And a couple are massive a-holes for refusing to go on without you in the water. Don't feel guilty. This is on them. Mostly your spouse and not on you. The idea sounds absolutely insane. I assume it's the US because there is no way a whole wedding party would put up with crap like that in the rest of the world. Not the a-hole. Stupidest thing I have ever heard of. Obi's husband is the a-hole too. OMG, I would have noped my way out of there and left. Not the a-hole. And frankly, I don't think he forgot to tell you. He purposely didn't tell you, figuring they'd get you to go along with it when you found out in a moment. I've been considering that possibility as well. If that is truly the case, I fear the problem runs deeper than this incident, because I don't think I can stay married to someone lying to me explicitly to manipulate me into doing things he knows I wouldn't want to do.